The Simpsons is one of the longest running shows in television history. And today I'm here with two renowned Simpsons writers, producers, legends, if you will, uh, Al Jean and Matt Selman. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today. <laughs> right on. Al's the um, legend. I'm, so, a, I'm like an apprentice legend. An apprentice legend? I, I could I could vibe with that. I think I, I feel like you guys are both legendary in your own right. Say it again, Al. I'm an unknown legend. I, I beg to differ. I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit today about uh, The Simpsons' ability to predict the future. Uh, you know, a lot of publications, uh, including IGN, have created lists uh, about just how prophetic The Simpsons have been over the course of the last 30-odd years. Um, some of our favorite predictions include uh, the ending of Game of Thrones, uh, the FIFA corruption scandal, uh, Disney buying Fox. So I guess m my first question on sort of a basic level is uh, how? How do you manage to accomplish these things? How do you uh, find yourself in a situation where you are you know, inadvertently predicting things that come to pass and what's it like to see those predictions come to reality several years down the line? Well, I think Matt should talk to the Game of Thrones. Uh, that was his prediction. I, I had <laughs> an episode with the FIFA prediction, which was actually a prediction based on things that had already happened, where I had read that <laughs> FIFA was incredibly corrupt and there were scandals. So it wasn't really a big jump to the episode, which was written by Michael Price. What was uh, lucky was that we wanted Brazil to lose because we wanted them to be sadly singing ole, ole. So we figured <laughs> if they lose, Germany will win. So we actually predicted the winner of, of the World Cup that year, which was not a bad prediction. If you just do more episodes for more decades than all the other shows, you're going to get more predictions right. And we really have all the other shows beat when it comes to decades. Um, <laughs> so the Game of Thrones thing was not a huge, amazing guess in that, you know, dragons, if there's going to be a dragon, it might burn a town. So, mm -hmm. not, so what you're saying, you know, what, what you're saying is rather than some sort of complex algorithm working in the background, you're just using common sense to make these predictions. Right. It's often, if you, if yeah, you, like, you know, we predicted Lady Gaga's halftime show. We predicted it by observing her shows that she had done and copying them. So, you know, it was just us stealing her material and predicting it back at her, if you want to look at it that way. Why, why do you think The Simpsons specifically, like, what is it about that room of writers that has allowed for this kind of thing to happen so frequently? You know, do you guys, is there some sort of method behind the way that you're going about it, or is it just sort of blind luck? We only hire Delphic Oracles. That's the only kind of writers we hire. So, um, no. uh, you know, we're uh, people that are looking ahead. We're writing episodes that air a year from now that might air again five or ten years down the road, we hope. So you're trying to think about what would be interesting to the viewer at that time. Uh, and that makes you an amateur futurologist, I'd say. An amateur futurologist. Also, I like that a lot. We all suffer from crippling pessimism and depression. <laughs> so we say a lot of terrible things and then they sadly happen. Specifically, I guess there's a few more jokes that I wanted to ask about, but um, Donald Trump becoming president in uh, season 11. And of course, like the one that has reached just insane meme levels of popularity this year is the coronavirus murder hornet prediction from way back in season four. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how those jokes came about and what the, what the, uh, essentially what the, the conversation in the writer's room was like at that time? Well, uh, I, I did that season four episode, and um, mm -hmm. it was uh, a flu, that not not from China, but from Japan, that came to Springfield. Mm -hmm. And then we coincidentally had a scene where Hibbert said, uh, there's no vaccine, just a placebo. And then they overturned a truck that was full of killer bees. It actually wasn't Torrance. Uh, but, you know, killer bees was a big thing we were afraid of then that uh, I guess is sure. going to hurt us. Um, and it's just a series of flukes, I, I, I have to say. You know, nobody was connecting anything then with any, you know, I was, you know, writing it and going with the other writers saying, Look, what would be a funny thing for there to be in the truck? Oh, bees. So that's it. <laughs> <laughs> But in hindsight, when all these things line up, you know, however many years down the road, 20 years down the road, what is it like seeing these sorts of predictions actually falling into place almost so perfectly like that? I like people that think we're time travelers. 
Except my question mm-hmm. to them is, why do you think you chose this year to come to? <laughs> like, isn't this the worst year? <laughs> yeah, it definitely seems that way sometimes. And uh, Matt, as, uh, about the Donald Trump episode, you know, predicting that Donald Trump would become president, was was that selected from, uh, you know, a batch of the most unlikely of outcomes, or was that something that that uh, you know was it done just strictly as a joke, or was that something that you were like, as you mentioned earlier, you're looking at basically what's what trends would inform you know future predictions? I mean, I don't remember exactly how the line ended up in the show. I do know it was probably kind of a throwaway as something unimaginably terrible that could never happen as opposed to like, this might happen. Um, It's, that's certainly the big crazy one of all the list, that's (laughs) for sure. Yeah, yeah, I I can only imagine like- At home. Uh Uh-huh. Like people watching this at home, please don't be confused and think the show predicted the exact method of Trump announcing his presidency. That was a video that was made after imitating what he did. We did not literally predict the escalator and all that. That was, that's not the prediction. The prediction was just the name. So don't think that would be magic. That would, or it would be Trump saw it and decided to do it. One of the two, <laughs> but otherwise it would be a hundred percent magic, and that that is beyond our, our capacity as magicians. We did, we did also predict a, a huge budget deficit. What do we? What can we expect from season thirty-two of The Simpsons? Oh, that's a good prediction. More good um, stuff. We have yeah episodes upcoming with uh, Ben Platt and Olivia Coleman. Uh, mm-hmm. We have an excellent episode. That did where the Simpsons go to ancient Rome, really fantastic. Uh, of course, a treehouse of horror, um, and we're totally on schedule. We've got really the animation. I just have to say, like I just got an episode back, it's just unbelievably good. All, all the shows coming back mm-hmm. look fantastic. Yeah, we have a That's lot of awesome. cool shows coming up. Um, what else is what else? We've got a Dave, Dave Harper of Stranger Things. Um, plays right. Mr. Burns like gets into a, a, a suit that enables him to mingle with the workers, and his new voice is David Harbour's. He was great, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, Good work. So we're just making it better and better. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Take care. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.